Okay. So I want to welcome everybody from the second shift and from outside of our community to this wonderful webinar on online networking in this new day and age. Sandy Sloan is one of our newest second shift members. And when she and I were doing her welcome interview, as many of you know that we go through that process, we, in, through our vetting process, I heard what Sandy had to offer and the types of webinars and speaking engagements she does. And I immediately said, you have to do this for the bigger community. It's such a value add. And this is really what we're trying to do in this time when things are a little bit confusing and work is um, kind of wonky. How do we double down and create uh, a situation where everyone can invest in themselves and be additive to the Second Shift community in general. So I welcome Sandy Sloan, who is the president of Solutions by Sloan. She's an expert in training and development, team building, special events, public relations, media, and journalism. She has 30 years of experience, or over 30 years of experience, where she helps companies and organizations of all sizes grow and heighten their awareness, realize their full potential using a comprehensive suite of services. And she's worked with companies like NBC and Burger King, and prior to launching Solutions by Sloan, she ran a uh, marketing for Comcast across the entire state of Florida. So she's very, very uh, well versed in understanding networking and marketing and how to market yourself. And I'm just gonna let her take this, run the entire thing and I'll come back at the end. So if people have questions, just put it in the Q&A and we will um, be able to address those towards the end. Thank you so much, Sandy, take it away. Thank you, Jenny. Hi, everybody. I am going to share my screen and please bear in mind that when I do these seminars and I've done tons of them for networking in real life and now online networking, it's usually about three and a half, four hours and it includes time for interactivity and to practice and do some role playing. We're not doing any of that today. We're going to just get the down and dirty quick best practices for you, but I am going to share my screen. Feel free, I know Jenny's uh, taping this, but feel free if you want to do screenshots of anything and hopefully you'll get a lot of good information. And I am going to go ahead and share my screen now. Host disabled attendee screen sharing. Okay, sorry, we'll, we'll get that right now. Okay. Try now, try now. Now it works, thank you. And I am now the host, so let me go ahead and open the presentation. And let me view it into a slideshow. How's that, can everybody see? Hello? Jenny, can no, you see? Let me, let me figure out why that's not working. Is it not working? Super fun when this is. Hold on one sec, let me figure out why it's not. We don't see your screen. Oh man. Uh oh. We'll get it. Give us one second. That's okay. This is this is the fun. Share screen. Let me. Give me one second. How about now? All right, now we got it. There we go. Okie dokie. Okay. So let me go ahead and just give you the correct view. Okay. And I am going to take myself off of here. Okay, so, okay, welcome everybody to Navigating Online Networking, upping your online networking game. And as I said, we have a lot to cover today. And since we had these issues with starting a little late, I am going to sort of whiz right through here and hopefully you'll get a lot of really great points. 
the first thing I want to really talk about is not long ago, networking was pretty straightforward. It just involved navigating a crowded room while scoping out the best people to talk to, stri striking up a conversation. Maybe you practiced how you wanted to uh, do a handshake. Maybe you did some investigating in advance to find out who you wanted to connect with. And once we got used to handing out our business cards, a completely new method of making connections has taken over. That's online networking. Thank you to networking in the age of Corona. So with the social media platforms being a staple today, the ability to build relationships, digital relationships, has never been more important and frankly, never easier. And there is an overlap between in real life networking and the online networking, but there are still plenty of opportunities to screw up the rules of professional etiquette. Not to mention, we often underestimate how difficult it can be to stand out amongst a sea of young professionals online. But just like any skill, online networking takes some practice in order to conquer it like a pro. And when approached effectively, it's a great platform for building a professional profile, growing your digital network, and even landing your digital job and your dream job. Hold on. Okay, so what is networking? We all know this. It is all of these things. It's making and utilizing contacts. It's sharing information between people. It's a person-to-person -person word of mouth program where you can get recommendations, referrals, it's a way to enhance your prospects for new business, new jobs, new recruits for your company, and even new friends. And it is, when it's done correctly, it's a fun and dynamic interactive activity that gives you positive results. Overall, I call it relationship marketing. Again, in real life and online, this is exactly what networking is. It might be one-on-one, -on -one, it might be in groups, there's so much for me to share, but again, I'm going to whiz through this because this is the way that we are going to be doing networking for the foreseeable future, and that is online. Very important. Networking is work. You even know that up front. The word work is right there in the middle of the word. It's not called net play. It's not called net fun. It's called network, and it is work. And just like anything that you want to get better at that you work at, you have to keep at it. How do you keep at it? Well, the more you practice, the better you get. If we were doing this in real life, you wouldn't just walk in to an event and be successful. You wouldn't just walk up to somebody and start babbling endlessly. You would get used to them. You would get used to what your commonalities are. So we want you to practice. How do you practice? How do you practice online networking? You start with events that are easy for you. When we did this in real life, that might mean at the supermarket, when you're talking to the cashier, you're practicing where it doesn't matter. No offense to the cashier, but that is a good place for you to try different things out. Same if you're sitting in the doctor's office. What do you do when it's online? Well, I would venture to guess that every single person on this call has been invited to a Zoom event with your friends, with your families, and that's the place that you should make sure you're ready for professional social networking. Because that is the place where what you want to project with people that you love and that love you, they are going to love you anyway, whether or not you are sounding silly or as you say something dumb, but it's a great way to practice. And as we know, practicing anything, those of us on this call who took dance as a child or soccer or music, music is a great example I like to use because if you don't practice, you don't get better. In my personal life, a few years ago, I decided I wanted to learn how to play the guitar and I did everything right. I bought a guitar. I got a guy to give me lessons. I even bought, for those of you who are Shark Tank fans, I bought the Chord Buddy because I thought that might help me to do a better job faster and learn how to play faster. What was my goal? My goal was to play the Beatles. So I started taking these lessons and my teacher, who was great, he said, okay, let's start with learning the chords. So I sort of did that. And then he said, okay, now we're going to progress to Yankee Doodle. I said, Yankee Doodle? 
I want to play, I saw her standing there. I want to play Blackbird. He said, Sandy, you can't do that if you don't practice. Well, needless to say, I didn't practice. I never got better. And that guitar sits in the living room staring at me as like I'm a failure. But the bottom line is you have to practice anything that you want to get better at. So what is the number one secret of effective networking? It's that every single person, every single person you meet can be a great contact. Never dismiss anyone as irrelevant. If you think about some of the contacts you have personally or professionally and where they originated from, you will know that this is true. There's a woman who is on this call, Stacy, who I connected with on LinkedIn when I first moved to Rochester. And we not only became friends on LinkedIn, but we became friends. And she ended up referring business to me. And she is now one of my very, very closest friends. But she ended up being very excited to connect with me on LinkedIn because I gave her the opportunity to not have a canned response. And we'll talk about that a little later. But back to treating everyone like a, a potential contact. I love this quote because it says, treat everyone like a precious oyster because you never know where you will find your pearl. Every contact can be potentially worthwhile. You really don't know where your next sale or referral or friendship or relationship might come from, just like what happened with Stacy. So connect with people you can help or who can help you on LinkedIn. I had originally connected with Stacy because we had similar backgrounds and we had similar jobs and I had moved here and I needed some help. But I've also connected with people who are on completely different career paths. Why is that? Because someone who has a totally different career path might be able to offer you a completely different perspective than those who mirror your own job history. It's really about having a well-rounded network. So prepare and be aware. When we're talking about online events and offline events in real life, you should always research the event in advance. If you have access to a list of other attendees, connect with them on LinkedIn and connect with any speakers who you know are speaking via LinkedIn in advance, expressing your interest in hearing from them. The online space has made it really a lot easier to form relationships, but the good rules of in-person networking still apply. You wouldn't, for example, walk up to somebody randomly at a conference and hand them your business card and ask them for help, but you would probably memorize their names, research them online, and approach them with a meaningful conversation starter. So most of you I have connected with on LinkedIn. I found you on LinkedIn if you had a profile and if your name was not one of a thousand others. And I sent you a personal request to link in with me. I talked about this seminar. I, if we had a commonality, like I found, I went to Tufts University for college. I found somebody else who's a jumbo and I mentioned that. And I also found several people who had gone to University of Florida. Both of my kids are Gators. So I used that as a commonality. Only one person out of the 95 people who registered for this reached out to me as the speaker and her name was Ileana Soto. And she sent me a request and I had no idea of where I knew her from, but it was from this. So she stood out to me because she reached out to me. I think it's a great way of connecting with people, not to give them a canned response on LinkedIn, but give them something that makes sense for them and makes them remember you. There are a lot of easy conversation starters by looking at people's uh, profiles. But are you scared? Yeah, people are usually scared about talking to strangers. If you aren't supposed to talk to strangers, how can you make friends? Because strangers, as we all know, are friends we haven't met yet. Every single person that you know, think about this, every single person that you know, unless it's your mother or your father or maybe your siblings, started out as a stranger. You had to start a relationship with them somewhere. But you don't think about them as strangers because you know them. All of our lives, we have been told, do not talk to strangers, stranger danger. 
and then we're faced with having to talk to strangers in our professional and personal lives and we hear our mother's voices saying stranger danger so it's really nervous it's really normal to be nervous about talking to people you don't know so if you're nervous or fearful remember this about fear you can think of it as false evidence appearing real and get really even more nervous or you can change your attitude and you can think about fear, F-E-A-R, as face everything and rise. If you look at it that way, it'll calm yourself down and you'll be ready to take on the challenges of meeting strangers. Now we're gonna get into some of the nitty gritty. Perception is reality because you never get a second chance to make a first impression. We need to talk about how you come across online. It's good and it's important information if you're networking one-on-one -on -one or you're doing group networking. You wanna always show your best self because whatever you show is what people are going to remember. Sometimes it's even good to ask yourself a question. What do you want somebody to remember about me? How do I wanna be perceived? So how do you do that? Well, the first thing, our visual cues are the most important. How you look online is really important. The rule of thumb is to avoid patterns, avoid stripes, avoid plaids, go for solid, bold colors. Like today I am wearing a bright yellow. And it sort of makes me memorable and it's my favorite color. I have simple jewelry on. Don't wear anything that is taking away attraction from, uh, taking away attention from you or it's distracting. And really important, especially with this pandemic, be fully dressed in professional attire in case you have to stand up. We have all been on these calls recently when a dog or a cat or a kid or a spouse or a partner or somebody rings the bell and it, it becomes part of what we are seeing online. So I have been in situations where people had great tops on and then they were wearing shorts. And it's sort of funny, but when you're in professional environments, you want to be your best and you want to look your best. So full dress in case you have to stand up. When we're in person, you're always checking your teeth, checking your nose, checking your hair, checking your makeup. We well, you can't really do that online that much. Although there is a video preview before the call that you can check yourself out. And when we're doing it in person, if we have a friend there, somebody might be nice enough to say, oh, you, you got something uh, in your teeth. Okay, good, that's great. The rule of thumb with in real life networking that I always tell people is if you don't have a mirror nearby or a networking buddy, your cell phone, if you turn around the camera, you get a picture of yourself and you can check yourself out to make sure that you look your best. When we're online, you have to use the video preview. And in both Zoom and WebEx, there's an option for showing you a preview of your video before the call even starts. So that video preview pops up before you enter the call and it will show you how everything looks. It's good to turn off your self video preview because sometimes you get really caught up in looking at your own hair and you stop paying attention to what the speaker is saying or what your boss is saying or, or your colleagues are saying. So I always turn it off because I find it's a little distracting. And in Zoom, if you wanna do that, you go in, uh, you right click on your own video window and you choose hide myself but it can be easy to forget you're on camera. So try not to do anything that you want others, that you don't want others to see. A good rule of thumb I say is just assume your camera is on even when you know you have turned it off. Okay, we're gonna start now. Lights, camera, action. Use natural light to your advantage, but don't have it behind you. I have been on calls where people look like apparitions because there's such bright sunshine behind them. And your own screen can be too bright, especially without natural light. So there is a way to adjust its settings. And if anybody's interested in seeing that, I'll be happy to share that with you afterwards. It's very easy. 
the only acceptable camera angle is head on at eye level. You don't want somebody looking down at your head. You don't want somebody looking up into your nostrils. And frankly, when you're at eye level, if you are concerned about having double chins, they don't show. Find a quiet space for the call. And sometimes this is not always so easy, especially with the kids working, excuse me, on uh, taking school from home or with animals in the house, but try. And keep your background clutter free and neutral. I right now am sitting in front of a white wall with a picture of my beloved dog Misha behind me. She died in January, but that is pretty neutral. If you're going to take a call from the laundry room because that's the only quiet spot in your home, don't have your laundry hanging out behind you or where it's visible or plates of food if you're in the kitchen. It is very distracting and it's not professional. So if you are using a virtual background, confirm it works. And sometimes it might be a good investment if you're doing a lot of these to buy a green screen. You should mute your phone, mute yourself, and mute your pause notifications. How do you do that? Well, on Mac, there is a way to do that. I use a Mac computer. And there is a way to do that in the settings where it's a do not disturb. Sometimes I have forgotten to turn it off and other people have forgotten to turn it off. So there is this fabulous free app called Muzzle. As soon as you start sharing your screen, it will turn off your notifications. I have been in meetings where people are, screen, are sharing their screens and their, their roommate or partner is sending them a grocery list and text and it shows up on the screen or you might be in a work environment and somebody is texting you saying something negative about your boss. Not, not a great look for anybody. So make sure to pause your notifications. There is something in Zoom and WebEx to test your mic in advance. And if you feel like you really need to really knock out the external noise, use headphones. I also really like to keep a notepad nearby so I can jot down information about the speakers, about some of the panelists, about other people, about maybe a question that I want to ask. And that way it's not distracting me because I'm writing it down independent of everybody seeing me typing. So when you log on to the event, obviously we had some problems with Zoom today, but the rule of thumb for this both in real life and online, is if you can't be on time, be early. In real life, you don't know if you're going to hit traffic or if there's going to be some kind of a problem. And online, I logged on early through no fault of anybody's, Zoom was not working. But it's good to log on early to make sure you can get to where you need to be. Once you've logged on, make sure your full name is on your video image. And you can also change that when you're looking at yourself, when there is a gallery view of everyone. In this case, again, close to 100 people. We're not doing a gallery view, but it is a great thing to have your full name on. When I have been the host of certain uh, online meetings, if somebody does not have a full name, I change it because nobody wants to see your email address. They just want to know what your name is. And first and last name is a good rule of thumb. In advance, you should know why you're attending. Are you looking for a new job? Do you want a referral? Are you trying to find a mentor? Are you looking for new recruits for your company? Or you just want to meet some new people? So have that goal in mind. And prepare what you want to say. A short, memorable elevator pitch is best. Let's talk about elevator pitches for a minute. Those of you who know what an elevator pitch is, and I'm venturing to guess that most, that's most of you, know that it's a succinct, succinct and persuasive sales pitch. It is very short, to the point, and it gets your point across. It is not an advertorial. It introduces you and your company, and it should be about the specific benefits and the what's in it for me advantages that you, your business, or your services will provide. But when you are thinking about your elevator pitch, what sounds good on paper may not sound natural when you're speaking. So even after you write something, 
practice it. And we'll talk about the elevator pitch pitches in a second about crafting this. But again, elevator pitch tips for online networking. Full screen, I've already, full name on your screen, I've already said that. Your company name, if you have one, and if there is enough space, use notes in front of you on index cards if you're nervous, keep that pad nearby. And remember that you should use different pitches for different audiences. Some pitches, if you're trying to get venture capital, that's gonna be a very different pitch than if you're on a speed dating networking event, or if you are on something where it is a volunteer opportunity, you're not asking them for money. So you really need to change what you're, what you're pitching based on who your target audience is. How do you craft your elevator pitch if you don't already have one? And again, probably most of you have one, but this is an easy mnemonic device share. So when you're thinking about crafting your elevator pitch, think of the word share. S stands for start with a relatable story or memorable illustration. H, choose something that highlights a problem you help customers solve. A, you add an emotional benefit statement. R, summarize results you can achieve for customers. And you, E, use empathy to determine how you can help the person you're talking with. So I have a whole bunch of different, <coughs> excuse me, elevator pitches for solutions by Sloan. But for this one, I crafted it for this, the second shift, I crafted this one. Hi, I'm Sandy Sloan. Everyone knows people who wish they had an extra set of hands and another 24 hours in a day to get things done for their business. My company, Solutions by Sloan, is like having an octopus around the clock available to help. We handle training, team engagement, special events, and PR without adding any headcount. So you're free to get other things done. With over three decades of experience, we've generated $13 million in revenue and huge savings for clients across many industries, transforming them into companies people want to work with and for. Now just imagine what Solutions by Sloan can do for your company. Which of these areas do you need help with? And notice that I used an open-ended question. So the relatable story or memorable illustration, you can picture an, an octopus multitasking which is what we do. We offer a lot of different, a lot of different uh, areas of help for business owners and for organizations. Something that highlights a problem. We give you more help we, and we handle uh, training, team engagement, special events, and PR without additional cost of adding an employee. The results, three decades of experience, $13 million in revenue, huge savings, <clears throat> and empathy, we can transform your company into a company that people want to work with and for, and that's for the training. And then we ask them to imagine, more empathetic, what we can do for your company. So it's not that hard when you use this formula. And I love to use mnemonic devices and anagrams like this because I find them to be very memorable. If I said to you right now, what are the five Great Lakes, you might struggle to name them. But if I gave you the acronym that most of us learned when we were in grade school, which was HOMES, H-O-M-E-S, you could say Lake Huron, Lake Ontario, Lake Michigan, Lake Erie, and Lake Superior. I think it's great to use these little tips and it also helps people get over being nervous. So online group networking opportunities. Many of us have had conferences canceled, but turn those conferences into networking opportunities with those who would have attended from your world. You might be able to get a list of people who are attending or who had planned to attend if the event has not been transitioned to virtual. Check them out, network with them, send them a LinkedIn. Use opportunities like Second Shift, this online seminar. Maybe you see the other people who are online right now. You certainly see the speaker and you certainly see Jenny. And if those of you who have, who have not connected with Jenny, absolutely connect with her. She is very, very connected with everyone. And I'm sure she would welcome any Second Shift and other people to connect with her. This is my favorite thing about online networking. 
you get to rethink geographic boundaries. Before, we were going to cocktail parties and breakfasts to network with people in our immediate area. It's a pretty safe bet that if I am living in New York City, someone from Denver is not coming to my networking event, but now they can. It doesn't matter where they are. The, the internet is the great equalizer. So we have the opportunity to talk with them, create these connections, and then regarding people who do live nearby, when it's possible again to meet face to face, we may be able to actually network in person. So connect with everyone, seek opportunities to be helpful and get to know others. How do you do that? Do something.org is a wonderful, wonderful organization. It has online volunteer projects. If there's something that you're interested in, if you're looking for a job, check it out. It'll give you something positive to focus on, and it will also give you a way to meet other people. If you are networking and doing online networking with senior leaders in your organization, excuse me, with your colleagues, invite senior leaders to join your team meeting. You get to showcase what you've been doing and they want to see, trust me, they feel out of touch. Invite them. The worst thing that can happen is nothing happens. They say, no, they're too busy. But imagine if, it, if they say yes, it showcases all of you in a fabulous way. You can even create an online cocktail party for fun and connection on, with, with your LinkedIn contacts, with your work colleagues, with groups that you're part of. I did this with some of my uh, work colleagues and I called it Drink, Think, and Link. And it was great. Everybody had to show up with a cocktail and we all had to share what was in our cocktail, how we made it, if anything was unusual, anything more unusual than a glass of wine or a gin and tonic. And then the think was we had to come up with something positive that had happened during the pandemic, like more time at home, slowing down, more sleep, whatever it was. And then we had to link, we had to provide a link of an educational or entertaining website that we had discovered online and it was a great sharing thing it gave people the opportunity to connect share fun things and it was also a great building opportunity for connections so what about in one-on-one -on -one networking well w-i-i-f-m as the woman's holding the sign stands for what's in it for me it's not about you it's about helping others their needs come before your needs so one of the things you really should think about doing is nurturing your current network. Because if all you're doing is asking for help and you're not giving any, your efforts will fall flat. Find out what people's pain points are, what their needs are, and see how you can help them. And as this bullet point says, sometimes the best networking opportunities involve real work that happens to be unpaid, such as volunteering with platforms such as Do Something, which I just talked about. Wouldn't it be great, especially those of you who are event producers, if you helped an organization plan their online gala? Because guess what? When we go back to work, they will remember what you did volunteering to help them and if there is a job you will be top of mind there are lots of one-on-one -on -one groups out there one that i am involved with is called lunch club if you guys are not familiar with it look it up it's in major cities and every week they give you opportunities to network one-on-one -on -one with people who you can do business with it has been great fun for me. You have to be invited to be a member, but it is free once you are invited. I don't know if it will be free once it goes away from the online, but right now it's free. It's a really fun way to meet people who have similar mindsets and people want to help you when you meet them this way, because really it's human nature. People get satisfaction out of helping others. And regarding Lunch Club itself, there are 12,000 people on the waiting list to get into Lunch Club in San Francisco, but New York, not so much. I'm on the New York City one. 
It keeps you top of mind. There are many, many others. Council Club is a, is a co-working space online for people who have always been working remote, but you can work and you can also goof around and network. So you become friends with these people. There are so many. There's a six, six degree society. There's something else called Cafecito, which is specifically for Latina uh, attorneys. Just do the research online and you will find dozens. So let's talk about your online presence. In this increasingly digital world, having a personal website can give the impression that you are proactive, that you're skilled in using digital technologies and that you're forward thinking about the way to present yourself. You've already taken the steps to boost your portfolio and make your resume as good as it can be. So doesn't it just make sense to showcase how you've spent your time and show who you are between the lines of the resume or the cover letter? Document your personal experiences online. Oh, but by the way, as you know, don't post anything you don't want the professional world to see because the internet is forever. Whatever you do can be found as we are seeing with politicians going back decades. So things they're not proud of, people can find. If you haven't already thought about this, create your own website, particularly if you're a consultant. I have a Solutions by Sloan website and it showcases who I am personally and professionally. Some of it's a little on the goofy side and that's okay because if people don't want to work with somebody who has a personality like mine, I don't really want them as a client. I don't have a blog but it is not a bad idea to have a blog as long as you know that you can keep up with it. It's a lot of work and you, I used to have a blog, but, but I stopped doing it. So I, I ended the blog, but a lot of people who have the discipline to do the blog, it's a great way to showcase what you can do and what you're about. A portfolio, create a portfolio to upload pro projects you've worked on. If you go to my LinkedIn site, you will see a couple of videos about trainings I've done. You will also see on my website, I produced the National Women's Hall of Fame induction in Seneca Falls last uh, September for including people like Justice Sonia Sotomayor and Jane Fonda and Angela Davis and Gloria, uh, Gloria Allred. It's on there. So people think it's pretty cool when they take a look. So that's sort of like my portfolio. It's a great opportunity to, to showcase what you've done. Create an about me page. Think about it in advance, put down what you want people to know about you, and then take the best parts of it and put it on your LinkedIn site. Another woman who is on the call today, Sandy Funk, is a good friend of mine. And she does a lot of things, but one of the things that she loves to do is photography. She uploaded beautiful photographs to her LinkedIn profile. Now people can see what she does and what she does outside of work time. Let's talk about cultivating your network. This is a perfect illustration of how to do that. Because as the thing below says, all you need to do is plant your seed, that's the action you take, water it, that's the repetition, and watch it grow. And you have to have the patience to do that. Success is action, repetition, and patience. And look at how beautifully that bloomed. Because when you plant a garden, you start out with a seed, you put it in the sunny place, you water it, you nurture it, and slowly but surely, it begins to take root and it eventually grows flowers but you give it time and you give it the attention. Your network's not gonna grow overnight. Your plants are not gonna grow overnight. Your online networking skills are not gonna grow overnight. But as we talked about at the beginning, the more you practice, the better you're gonna get. Once you make those connections, you have to follow up. Ideally within 24, 48 hours, when you and the event are still top of mind. Most importantly, I talked about this a little bit earlier, don't connect with a canned invitation. Generally speaking, if somebody sends me, I'd like to join your professional network, I do not accept them. It shows that they did not take the time to invite me to connect with something that was personally important to me. 
So it's easy to write an invitation for different things where you customize your request with the context of your meeting. For those of you who I was not able to connect with on LinkedIn, when you send me a request to link in with me, and by the way, if you don't have a LinkedIn profile, you really need to get one. It is the way business is done, especially now. But when you send me a LinkedIn request, those of you who I haven't already requested, go ahead and tell me that you were part of this, this second shift seminar. It will make me feel like you listened to what I was saying. You can request a private follow-up meeting, but don't request help from them yet. Just say, hey, I'd like to get to know you better, maybe for an international, in, in, excuse me, inver, informational meeting. But if they don't respond, don't take the lack of their response personally. Just keep trying. They might be busy, they might not have seen it, any number of reasons that they might not respond. But even if they have no desire to connect with you, don't take it personally. But as the great hockey player, my favorite, Wayne Gretzky said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. What have you got to lose? Nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? And you want to give it a fair amount of time and set a reminder to follow up again with them if they haven't connected with you. After you send that initial follow up, try to interact with them at least once a week so you are top of mind. And social media makes that so easy for us. Follow them. You can like what they've said or shared. You can comment. You can share their contact. And that, you know what happens then? You ensure your name shows up in their notifications. You can even do direct messages, emails, and phone calls if you know them that well. And those are impactful too, but not when you're first starting out. Really, the secret to building these general relations, genuine relationships is just showing up. Are there relationships that you are thinking about reactivating? Just do it. What are little things you can start doing every day to strengthen or reignite and warm up your relationships? Just let someone know you're thinking about them. Don't wait. Do it. Be proactive. Use small uh, opportunities for reaching out and reach out because really how we treat our network, our online network today will really determine if we still have a network to fall back on when the pandemic is over and it will be over. I don't know when, but it will be over. Now, I always like to leave this with people, the 10 commandments of effective online networking. It goes over what we have talked about. Thou shalt research the company, the event, the speakers in advance and have a goal for attending. Reach out to anyone of interest. Look your best. Check the sound, the light, the angle of the way you look on video. Log on early. Listen more than speak, paying attention to info on how you can help others. Have a compelling 30 second elevator pitch prepared and ready to deliver. And again, for different audiences. Think about three questions for the speaker that you have ready in case your first one or two are taken. Follow up with your contacts within 24 to 48 hours. Connect using personalized invitations, not the auto responses, and reestablish your past contact. And I am going to give you now a 90 day challenge just so you have something to focus on. I want you to identify at least six online networking events that you can attend. Again, if they are to practice getting better, that's great. And if they are to actually get business, that's great too. Connect with at least six new contacts on LinkedIn. You can count me as one. And on other platforms, whether those are groups on LinkedIn, on Facebook, uh, I'm a member of something called the Female Founders Collective. There are so many. Create those three surefire conversation starters for your connection requests and fill in the details as you go. So you might want to have a little canned response from you that you can add in. And practice it often. Invite your friends for a Zoom call and try some things out. Say, hey, how does this elevator pitch sound to you? 
there is no shortage of practicing opportunities. And that is it. I am going to stop my sharing and I think that we are going to open this for questions. Let me. I, Sandy, I thought that was amazing. Really detailed and practical information. Thank you so much. Like, thank you. When the information is actionable and specific. And I, as I was listening to you, I was realizing how many of those mistakes I've actually made <laughs> in the last six months as we've been doing this. Just, I'm sitting here picking my, checking my teeth and looking at myself in the thing and the right angles. And, you know, it's been a work in progress, but having it, everything outlined right there is really incredibly helpful. And um, I'm excited that we're going to have this information and thank you for generously allowing us to post it on our blog when this is done. Really appreciate it. So we have some questions coming in and we have about 15 minutes. So that's great. Um, so the first question is from Gloria, who said, do you suggest sending a LinkedIn invite with a message? I hear conflicting things about it. I do. And those of you who I connected with and Gloria, I know you are one of them. I, LinkedIn has changed the way you can send these invitations. Now you have to send the invitation and it says, I want to add you to my professional network. And then you go back and it says, add a personal note. I do that 100% of the time. And many of you responded back to me. So now we have an ongoing dialogue and you know me and I know you. I know a little bit about you and you know a little bit about me. So we become sort of online friends. My professional opinion is always send a note, not just the invitation. Great. And now Greta asks, do you I set a goal it. amount do you set a goal amount of an, uh, do you sell it? Sorry. Do you set a goal of an amount of time per week for online networking? Oh, that's a great question, Greta. And Greta, I know from Rochester here, she's, she's a, a wonderful attorney and friend. I do not. I find that I am constantly using LinkedIn. So daily I am making requests. I have close to 2000 contacts, which is quite a few. I suggest if you have fewer than 500, the magic number on LinkedIn is 500. If you have 499 LinkedIn contacts, your LinkedIn profile says 499. If you have 500 or over, it says over 500. You want people to think that you know a lot of people. So the magic number that you wanna to get to is 500. And if that means setting aside 10 minutes every day to just see different content and different opportunities where you can connect with people, do that. Just like you set an alarm for when you wake up in the morning, set an alarm or give yourself an evite on your calendar that says, okay, from noon till noon, 1215, I am going to go on LinkedIn and I am going to connect with X number of people. But do it in an authentic way and you will eventually get to where I am, which is every single day, anybody I talk to, it's automatic. I link in with them and I will remind them, we talked about optics and photonics, which is one of my big clients here in Rochester. I would love to link in with you and find out more about what you do. And they say, okay, because I'm top of mind at that point. It's really interesting advice and I think people do get lost in the LinkedIn shuffle, but also seeing the feed is a great way to reach out to people because all you have to do is respond to an article or make a compliment somebody once you can made that connection. So you've, you're you already creating that intimacy and that friendship because everybody likes a compliment. Absolutely. And Jenny, when I was connecting with some of these people who I know are from Second Shift, I loved every time I saw, oh, Jenny is a mutual connection. Those of you who, as I said earlier, that you don't have Jenny, Jenny will accept your connection request. Just send it to her, yeah. tell her I think you're awesome. I think Second Shift is the bomb. Let's go ahead and, and be friends on LinkedIn, connect on LinkedIn, and she will. And it's, it is really useful. And I, I heard a statistic at the beginning of um, the, uh, the quarantine, whatever, when we went all remote, that people were doing more connecting and there was more response rate on LinkedIn than by email. Correct. 
people just, it lends itself to that sort of intimacy that you don't get when you just don't feel like dealing with your emails. Right, and it's fast. Yeah, okay, so we've got a few more. Mary Ellis says, do you have any specific recommendations for forming relationships with recruiters who may be key to opportunities in the quote unquote hidden market? You know, rec recruiters are a different animal, but they are still human and they still want to connect because they don't know where their next contact is coming from. So the best way, if you know who they are, the hidden network, I can't help you with. That, that's, you know, you, ha you have to CSI that on your own. I, I can't figure that out for you. But if you know who the hiring manager is, you can connect with them and tell them that you are interested in working for Amazon and that you know that they're the hiring manager and you would love to have an opportunity, not necessarily to interview for the job, but you think that what they're doing is so wonderful, would they be willing to sh have an informational interview, not of about the job, but how they got that client? Everybody wants to talk about themselves. That's- That is always true. true. I, you know, before I started this company, I was in journalism, I was a journalist, and the number one things people would say is there's no reason to fill silence you don't have to be the one to always speak. You can, if you ask somebody a question or a personal question, everybody likes to answer and fill that space themselves. But even my, my son who is graduate, who's just graduated from law school in Boston, he said, mom, what do I say when the person I'm interviewing with says, do you have any more questions? What if they gave me all the information? No, ask them about themselves. Hey, how did you get this job? What's your background? And then you will have a hard time shutting them up. Mm -hmm. But never ever say, by the way, in an interview, no, I have no questions, you've answered everything. That is the death knell for getting a job. It's a good point. Okay, so Dina asks, I know it's important to stay relevant by posting frequently. What is your advice in terms of sharing even mildly politically oriented content? Very good question, Dina. <laughs> especially right now. I mean, I even, I handle all the second shift social media posting and I have like a heart attack every time I think about posting anything that could be interpreted any way politically. Um, so that is definitely something to think about right now. And I think that the rule of thumb is you need to make it neutral because just because someone does not necessarily sit on the same aisle as you do politically, does not mean that you can't be friends with them or good business relationship or have a good business relationship with them. It's best to post neutral things. I had a client that I posted some of the things that showed my side of the aisle and I was called by the client and told to take it down. So I said, but it's my personal Facebook in this case. And the response was, but you are working with us. So by association, that is what our opinions end up being. And I took it down. And it was a lesson for me because in a professional situation, you know, that was LinkedIn, that was personal, but they still didn't want me to do it because people were connecting with me through, link, through uh, Facebook. They were Facebook friends. I just say, do not do anything that's political. When, when in doubt, leave it out. That's good advice, just even if you're an employee, because there's just so many ways in which people can get in trouble and it's very hard to make differentiations between social media platforms. I mean, that's something we kind of make up in our own minds that isn't necessarily the actual fact, like just because it's on your own page versus your work page it's still discoverable and you and we've all blended all sides of ourselves in this moment so you can't really hide you can't hide where you live you can't hide what your, your what your feelings are about things so you should think about who's going to be seeing everything before you decide what you're going to put up agreed all right i think we have time for one more question if there's one more otherwise i'd love for you to, to tell us about how people can reach you, if companies are interested in hiring you, what other resources are available, if there's an opportunity for you to promote your brand. Thank you so much. So as I said earlier, Solutions by Sloan is my company. 
I have been doing it for seven years here in Rochester, following very long professional career in New York City, at working as the marketing director for WPIX TV for many years and launching a lot of their initiatives, starting the radio station Hot 97 when it first started as Hot 103. I was a publicity director for Macy's New York from, for a long time. And in Florida, in Fort Lauderdale, I was, as you had shared earlier, the marketing director for Comcast for the state of Florida. So I have a lot of different major market experience. And what I ended up doing was taking all of that experience and creating this consultancy and really highlighting the areas of my expertise which are pretty diverse, but I love doing special events like that uh, National Women's Hall of Fame induction weekend, which was amazing. And that was a once in a lifetime thing last September. And the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade and lots of concerts, that kind of thing. And for my client here doing their special events. So I am great with special events. We have a big special event that has been taking place in June. Now we have had to pivot to do it online. It's in September, but it'll be fine. It'll be good. It, frankly, for, again, you guys out there who are events people, online events are infinitely harder than in real life events. I never would have believed it, but it's so much more difficult putting that all together. But I can help you with events. I can do event production. My favorite thing to do in the whole world is training and workforce development and solutionsbysloan.com, and Sloan has an E at the end. I offer about 40 different seminars, just culled from my 30 years of experience, which I know it's hard to believe I have 30 years of experience since I'm only, what, 25 now. Um, but just lessons learned in all of these different areas as a journalist, as a media person, as a marketing person, as an events person, I put it all together in these short bite seminars and I train companies and organizations all over the country. So if you want to get in touch with me, my well, website. Two things. Um, we're going to have all of the information about you and your company and how to reach you when we post this video through our blog and just sort of some highlights so people can see. I don't even know how we would distill this information down. I think people just really need to watch the whole thing. And I will say, I have, since we've been sitting here, 20 LinkedIn requests. So people are actually <laughs> following your advice and we're clearly paying attention. So I will be responding to all of you who send LinkedIn requests. And um, I just want to say thank you. And thank you to everybody who was here and participated and asked questions. And this has been um, a wonderful hour. Sorry about the technical difficulties, but I feel like we really got it all in. So yay. And um, take care, Sandy. Take care, everybody. And we'll be seeing you all soon. Thank Bye. you, everyone. Bye. Bye.